So when we look at simplifying sets, we can actually do that in multiple different ways. Uh, one of the more common ways is uh, using this rule here, that the square root of a multiplied by the square root of b equals to the square root of a, b. And you notice here that uh, a and b are under the same square root sign. Okay. How do we actually do this? Let's look at a few examples. Right. Here's our first example, uh, the square root of 8. Okay. And when they ask us to simplify thirds, they want us to reduce the number inside the square root uh, to a number that's as small as possible. To a number that's as small as possible. How can we do that? Well, we're going to use these factors. And you notice here that the square root of AB can be broken up into the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B. How we can actually work backwards like that is by finding the factors of the number inside this square root. Okay, so what are the factors of 8? Well, I know that I've got 1 and 8. That's the obvious one. That's my first pair. I've also got 2 and 4. Now those are my factors of 8. Okay, so I can rewrite this in this way, that the square root of 8 equals to the square root of 1 multiplied by the square root of 8. For that, I know the square root of 1 is just 1, and 1 multiplied by the square root of 8, that's going to give me root 8 again. So that's not a really interesting kind of application. Let's look at this one. The square root of 8 also equals to the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 4. Remember, I'm just using this rule up here. I'm just using this rule up here. Okay. But what you notice here is that the square root of 4, I know that that can be simplified to simply 2. Right? The square root of 4 is 2, that's all I've done there. And I can simplify this in further, root 2 multiplied by 2, the way we write that is 2 root 2. Okay? That just means 2 lots of root 2. Okay? And that's how I can simplify the following set, because you notice I've reduced the number inside the square root sign. Uh, and it doesn't matter uh, how large the number inside the square root sign is, we can always try and reduce it to a smaller number. So I've got the square root of 50 here, and I want to try simplify this third. And again, I want to look at what are the factors of 50. So 1 and 50, that's the obvious one. 2 and 25, and 5 and 10. Now, when we want to simplify a third, we're actually really interested in the factors that have a perfect square. What is a perfect square? Well, it's a number that when I take a square root, I'm going to end up with a whole number. Okay. Uh, so the square root of 50, that's not really going to help us. Uh, the square root of 10 or 5, that's not really going to work either. Uh, the reason why I skipped over 1 is because the square root of 1 is just 1, and that's not really an interesting application, as I said earlier. But here, when I take the square root of 25, I know that that's going to be equal to 5. So this is the one I want to work with. This is the pair of factors I want to work with. I want to use that same rule we learned before. I can break this set up, square root of 50, using these two factors. Right? So the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 25. Okay, And I already uh, realized that the square root of 25, all that equals to is 5. Okay. And then I can write this finally as 5 square root of 2. Okay? 5 lots of root 2. That's all I'm writing here. And again, I've reduced the number inside the square root to a number that's as small as possible. Hey, let's look at another example. Uh, 3 square root 20. How am I going to simplify this third? Okay, well, what does this actually mean? 3 square root 20? All that's saying is 3 multiplied by the square root of 20, okay? That's all that means. And so, once we realize that, we can actually look at breaking up this set again in order to simplify it, right? And the way we do that is, remember, we want to look at the factors. So, the factors of uh, 20 are 1 and 20 uh, to 10, and 4 and 5, okay? So we looked at these factors now. Again, we're looking for factors that have a perfect square. And the one that I'm going to use here is this one here, 4 and 5. Because I know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. Right? I know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to keep the 3 there. 3 multiplied by, I'm just going to put in brackets, uh, 
when I break up this third, the square root of 20 equals to the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 5. Simplifying that again, I know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. Okay, now multiply these brackets out. Okay, and now I know that 3 times 2, that's just 6. And 6 multiplied by the square root of 5, that's just equal to 6 root 5. And again, you can see that I've uh, reduced the number inside the square root to as small as possible. Let's look at one last example. Um, <clears throat> let's look at 5 square root of 27. Okay. Uh, again, you want to consider the factors here. Uh, once you get better at this, you don't even have to write out the factors. You can just realize, okay, 1 and 27, that's not going to work. Uh, 3 and 9, okay, 3 and 9. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting because the square root of 9 is just 3. So another way I can write this is... Okay, so, um, I don't have to always write the brackets. I mean, I'm writing out the steps now just so it's really clear what's going on. Uh, but as you get better, uh, you can get more comfortable with skipping these steps here. Okay, I'm using that root a b equals to, sorry, root a multiplied by root b equals to the root of a b. Right, I'm not changing it at all. And then the square root of 9, I know that's just going to be equal to 3. I can multiply these integers out. So 5 multiplied by 3, that's just 15. And finally, I get 15 square root 3. That's it.